Yuki was a riseless loser who looked like an ape and spent his miserable life as a human vacuum cleaner. However, his life took a new turn when he met this powerful chick who made him her slave and clapped the hell out of him till he became the strongest demon. It all began one day when Yuki searched for a job since his ass was broke as hell. However, the atmosphere suddenly grew foggy. Then a powerful gust swept over him, and in an instant he found himself in another dimension called Mato. He quickly checked ChatGPT for information about Mato, which he found was an alternate dimension accessible only through portals known as doors that appeared across the country. Civilians were warned to stay put until the Demon Defense Force arrived to rescue them. At that moment, a monster emerged from the ground and attacked Yuki. He narrowly escaped and ran as fast as he could, but he quickly got tired. Just then, a group of monsters surrounded him, ready to feast, but before they could Issei hide him, a jaw titan wannabe save him. He soon realized its ride by a member of the Demon Defense Force. She unleashed her sword, eliminating the monsters in an instant. After the Jaw Titan is sent to an Isekai, she introduces herself as Yuzen. She ordered Yuki to climb onto her new wannabe, and they raced away as the monsters chased them. Shots took out two of the monsters, revealing three other girls from the Demon Defense Force. Yuzen then instructed the girls to handle the monsters while she carried Yuki to safety. So they split up as they battled the monsters, sending them to an isekai with ease. Shortly afterwards, the girls rescued a young boy from Doom and drove him to headquarters. However, the boy told them his sister was still somewhere in the dimension. On the other side of Mato, Yuzen and Yuki saw a little girl being chased by a monster. Yuki immediately recognized her as one of the kids he'd seen earlier on the road. As the girl fell from a cliff, Yuzen caught her midair. Soon enough, monsters began surrounding them, but Yuzen fought them off with ease. A monster attacks the girl, but Yuki and Yuzen ultimately save her. She then casts a barrier to keep the monsters out. Inside the barrier, Yuzen reflected on her desire to become the supreme commander of the Demon Defense Force, even though her mother had always doubted her. However, she was determined to prove everyone wrong. She had never tested her powers on a human before, but this time she would have to make an exception. She announced to Yuki her intent to make him her slave, which caused the dude's brain to short circuit. She sent the girl to watch Paw Patrol and then pinned Yuki to the ground, saying she would do everything to survive. She showed Yuki her fingers, hinting that she wanted him to suck gently. The moment he did, he burst into the sky with massive energy bound by chains and transformed into a furry Power Ranger version. Everyone was shocked that Yuki had turned into the commander's slave. With that, Yuki went on to decimate the rest of the monsters on the way effortlessly. As they rode, Yuzen was in total disbelief that Yuki was incredibly fast piercing them like in a ditty party. However, after saving the little girl, a giant monster appears, but Yuzen and Yuki destroy it with a big demonstration of power, shocking the girls by how powerful he is. After that, Yuki returned to his normal, weak-ass form. Yuzen sent the girls to the headquarters and then she suggested to Yuki they retain his slave status, stunning him. However, before he could react, Bro received a surprise kiss that caught him off guard. Yuzen told him that this was the reward for his great job. She explains that she has to reward her slave with whatever he wants most every time she uses her power. Yuzen asked if he wanted another. However, before he could respond, the bad chick forcibly gave him everything the loser virgin subconsciously wanted. After that intense moment, she asked him again to become her slave, and seeing all the benefits of loads of plots attached, Bro immediately agreed. Afterward, they teleported to the Demon Defense Force dorm, and they both headed inside to meet the girls. The girls wondered why Yuki was in their dorm, and Yuzen told them he would be the new caretaker, shocking Yuki. Hearing this, the girls were delighted to have a male servant they could bang any time. Yuki tried saying that this was not in the job description, but Yuzen told him that, on the battlefield, he would be her slave and in the dorm, her caretaker, welcoming him to the 7th Elite Battalion. Later, while Yuki did his duties, he suddenly spotted a monster rushing toward him, but it is stopped by the protective barrier. Nay explained that their dorm was in the unlucky Yuraman area, which was why they had more monster sightings than other places. When Yuki asked what that meant, she drew in the sand to show him the meadow's division into eight zones. Shortly afterward, Yuki served a meal worthy of an Instagram post, earning praise from Suruga on his cooking skills, with the others agreeing. They then reminded him of the chores left to do, and he set off to tackle them happily, at least until he remembered he wanted to be a hero, not handyman. Frustrated, he asked Yuzin why he'd only been doing chores instead of helping her out in the field, and she bluntly told him to focus on what he was hired for. 
Yuki tried to argue, but Himari pointed a sword at his throat, warning him not to question the commander's orders. Yuzen then told her to chill, but just as he was about to sigh in relief, she reassured the girls that if he stepped out of line, she'd personally handle him. The girls seemed fine with that, while Yuki was left wondering why she would even consider that. Later, Yuki took a break on top of the tower when he saw Himari heading to bathe without her plot armor. His mind nearly froze, so he quickly looked away, but just then, he heard Suruga's voice accusing him of peeping. Though he couldn't see her, she called to him from above, explaining her ability to grow and shrink at will, and then took out her phone to snap him. When Yuki asked what was going on, she admitted she'd been watching him to understand what made guys tick. She then blackmailed him into becoming her servant. The next day, while Suruga lounged with her manga and Yuki cleaned, he devised a plan to grab her phone and delete the incriminating photo. When she tossed her phone to the floor, but she grabbed it first, leaving him awkwardly holding her peach cover. She teased him, saying she didn't see him as a man but just as her pet. Since he was the housekeeper, she insisted tidying up her things was part of his role, and he reluctantly accepted. As he picked up the peach cover, a camera flash went off, and he realized she'd gotten even more blackmail material on him. Trying to stay calm, Yuki convinced himself the photos were just accidental and hoped Yuzin wouldn't find out. Just then, he saw Yuzin and Himeri in an intense sparing match. A monster suddenly appeared, and Yuzin rushed at it, giving it an instant elimination. Seeing this, Bro became certain that her threat earlier about squeezing his balls was not a bluff. Later, Nei informed Yuki that everyone except Suruga would be heading out on a mission, encouraging him to get to know Suruga better, as she was nice. Suruga then roped Yuki into giving her a shoulder massage, which she enjoyed while he glared, plotting his chance to finally stand up to her. But when the cultured creep looked down at her melons pointing north, he got distracted and decided to delay his plan. She asked how he'd gotten so skilled with his hands, and he explained he used his hand for more vigorous up and down movements. When he was done, she suggested they play a video game. He warned her he was pretty good, so she proposed the loser had to remove a piece of clothing. He immediately accepted, but Suruga soon won with three straight knockouts and told him to start stripping. He joked about keeping things PG-13 for you two, but she laughed, saying no one cared here and she was curious to see what a guy really looked like on the inside. He warned her that, as a man, he could get freaky, but she laughed, transforming into her giant form and picking him up like a toy. She pinned him down, yanked off his underwear, and laughed at the mini size of his rod. Suddenly, they heard rumbling outside, and they went to find a huge monster trying to break through the barrier. Suruga told Yuki to stay back and watch her in action. She activated her paradigm shift ability, growing even larger than the monster. As it lunged at her, she dodged, flipped it, twirled it in the air, and slammed it down, finishing with a powerful kick. As she began to shrink back down, Yuki warned her to look out, and she got slammed by another giant monster as the rest of the horde joined, making it even bigger. Suruga struggled to dodge, realizing she needed to finish this quickly. She tried to grow back to full size, but her ability failed, and she was grabbed by two monsters that held her in place for the giant to strike. Helpless, Yuki wished he could transform, remembering how he had after sucking on Yuzin's hand. Desperate, the genius had an idea. He ran to the laundry room, kissed her glove, and felt a surge of power but couldn't fully transform. He then grabbed her top, which only transformed one foot. Finally, he found her boots and despite the grossness, gave them the cringiest, sloppy lick he could manage, hoping it would work. Meanwhile, Suruga struggled against the monster, starting to regret using her trump card too early. Just then, Yuki charged in with a half-transformation, telling her to hold the monster still. He lunged toward the monster and landed a powerful punch that sends it to hell instantly. Following that, he returned to his normal form and fell into Suruga's Silicon Valley. Later that day, Yuzin gave Yuki a rough massage as a reward, with Himera calling him a wuss for being so tired after a single fight. Yuki asked why they weren't fixing the barrier, and Yuzin explained it would heal itself if the damage were minor. After grinding her elbow into his back, she told Shiruga to stop messing with Yuki just for fun, and instead help him. As Yuzin left, Suruga sat on Yuki, teasing him with her blackmail material. Yuki realized he was completely trapped forever, while Suruga silently promised never to let him go. Elsewhere, the protective barrier shattered as a squadron tried to flee from their attacker. One girl stayed behind to let the others report to the commander, but before she could act, a shadow monster swooped by, then knocked her out with a single punch. It lifted her to devour her, but a mysterious woman ordered it to release her.
The next day, Yuki and Uzen teleported back to Japan through the gateway. Once there, Uzen decided to change clothes, which left Yuki captivated by her new look. As they strolled along the street, he couldn't help but admire her beauty up close. Meanwhile, back in Mado, Suruga looked for Yuki, but Nei informed her that he had gone out with the commander. Shortly after, Yuki and Uzen arrived at a graveyard where Uzen revealed that some time ago, a group of monsters crossed over into the human world, wreaking havoc and causing countless deaths. She explained that among them was a powerful monster with a single horn, which she called the Yunhorn. While all the lesser monsters were killed, the Yunhorn managed to escape back through the gateway into Mado. Uzen then vowed to avenge the millions who died by destroying the Yunhorn herself, and she urged Yuki to be ready for the battle when the time came. On their way back to the nearest gateway, Yuki suggested a quick stop to try the city's best parfait. While they enjoyed their treat, Uzen grew concerned for Mado's safety in her absence. Yuki then confided in her that he had lost his sister inside Mado as well. Just then, Uzen received an emergency alert of an attack on Mado. To reach the nearest gateway quickly, Yuki transformed into his beast form, and they sped off at lightning speed toward Mado. Once they returned, Uzen offered Yuki a reward, asking him to take off her socks, a gesture the cultured creep with a foot fetish didn't hesitate to indulge in while enjoying a Ford view of her half-glory. Afterwards, they hurried to the location under attack. When they arrived at the icy mountain, Suruga transformed into her massive form while Himeri fired at the monsters, taking down several. Suddenly, Suruga was hit by a powerful blast of mystic energy that sent her flying. From the mist, the Yunhorn appeared, leading Yuki stunned. Riding atop the even horn was a mysterious girl who announced she'd come to join the party. The team was shocked to realize the monstrous humanoid could talk. The mysterious girl wasted no time, blasting him merry with dark purple energy before Ozen and Yuki leaped in to attack. Swearing not to let the unihorn escape again, Ozen and Yuki engaged the girl and her beast in a fierce battle, exchanging powerful blows. During the fight, the girl ensnared Yuki with her long hair whip and drew him closer, only to freeze in shock as she seemed to recognize him. Seizing the distraction, Uzen sliced off the girl's arm, but before she could land another blow, the girl and the Unihorn escaped. Frustrated, Uzen turned her focus to ensuring her injured team made it back home safely. Back at the dorm, the wounded team members rested, while Uzen rewarded Yuki with a massage that left him on cloud nine. While they were together, Yuki mentioned that the humanoid on the Unihorn might be his lost sister, noting her strange reaction when she looked at him in his beast form. While cooking, Yuki still wondered if the girl he saw was his sister. But the problem was he couldn't understand how she managed to survive or why she was fighting against the demon defense. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Mato, the mysterious girl is revealed as Oba ponders over what she has seen. She was convinced the beast she encountered was her brother and wondered when the demon force had started accepting men into their ranks. Despite her shock, she was pleased at the thought of reuniting with him. Later, at the dorm, Yuki decided to take a bath in a secluded area, but was startled when Suruga suddenly appeared behind him, insisting on scrubbing his back. As he turned, he was shocked to oblivion, realizing her pillows were completely exposed, prompting him to bolt out of the bathroom faster than Sonic. He found himself face to face with an unclothed Himari. Without hesitation, she whipped out a chainsaw ready to unil of him. Just in time, a portal opened, and two new chicks emerged, members of the Sixth Squad. One was a blondie with a Karen haircut named Tenka, and the other was an emo-looking girl named Yaki. A few minutes later, Tenka and Yaki, while having tea, discussed the potential merger between their divisions with Uzen. Himera joined in, Yaki cut her off, urging her not to shame the family by showing weakness and suggesting she return home. She added that while a merger might be necessary, they were hesitant to trust Uzen's team because she was certain there was someone who would slow them down, although she wouldn't mention names. And seeing her reaction, Uzen proposed they prove each team's strength with a single combat exhibition match. Tenka and Yaki agreed and teleported back to their base. Himeri then approached Uzen, asking for permission to start preparing for the match as she glanced over at Yuki. With Uzen's approval, Himeri announced that Yuki would be her slave from now on, much to his horror. During lunch that day, Uzen commented on Yaki's disrespectful attitude, which had gotten under her skin encouraging Himeri to beat her to a pulp. Afterwards, Himeri and Yuki went outside the barrier, deep into the Mado, to train for the duel. Suddenly, they were surrounded by a swarm of bloodthirsty Shuki. So Himeri instructed Yuki to kiss her hand quickly. 
which he did, triggering a bright neon light that transformed him into another type of abomination. Following that, Yuki punched one of the Shuki, but realized he wasn't as strong as before. He was, however, much faster. Using his speed to his advantage, he tore through the monsters with blinding agility. After this, the time for a reward came. Himeri found herself opening her floodgate for the boy, but she didn't know why. However, Yuki informed her it was his reward for being her slave. With no other option, she tossed her skirt to the floor and pounced on him, letting him enjoy the taste of her creamy peach. On the ride back home, Yuki asked why she was so determined to win. She gave him a history lesson, revealing that in her influential family, she was considered a disappointment compared to her sisters. Hearing this, Yuki could relate since he was the chief officer of disappointments. Himuri explained that this was her chance to prove them wrong for the first time since cutting ties with her family. After they arrived at the dorm, Himeri told Yuki they needed to perfect their finishing move. When Yuki asked about Yaki's abilities, Himeri explained that her sister's power, Golden Hour, allowed her to control time, including freezing and rewinding it like Doctor Strange. Hearing this, Yuki knew they were screwed. The next day, they ventured back into the Mado for another training session, working on perfecting a single powerful punch. Himeri instructed Yuki to focus all his energy on one part of his body, and he succeeded causing his leg to swell with strength. When Ashuki appeared, he practiced on it. Afterwards, Himeri patted his head as a reward. During another training session, Uzen joined in, reminding Himeri that the true essence of using her ability was to ride her slave rather than letting him fight alone. With that, Himeri mounted Yuki, taking charge of the chains on his neck and issuing commands as his master. Together, they unleashed a flawless finishing move that pierced through the monster, creating a hole wider than the hole in between Himuris's thighs. After their intense training, Yuki collapsed in exhaustion, and as a reward, Himeri displayed all her feminine benefits in 4K. When the day of the duel finally arrived, Tenka teleported to their house with her team. They all then teleported to the deep meadow, where a new girl, Jinna, created a barrier to prevent any Shuki from interrupting the duel. Acting as the referee, she announced the start of the match. With that, Yaki taunted Himeri, claiming she'd win and take her back as her slave, which only fueled Himeri's determination. However, Yuki nodded to Himeri, assuring her they had this. Immediately, amidst a whirlwind, Yuki transformed into his beast mode, and while the short emo Yaki was still taunting, she was suddenly struck by a powerful punch that sent her flying. Dazed, she wondered what had just hit her. Then she activated Golden Hour, rewinding time by five seconds. When the battle reset to its start, Himeri noticed that Yaki was already showing signs of fatigue, proving their strategy was effective. With that, Yuki leaped into the sky and descended with fierce intensity, preparing to land the final blow. Just then, Yaki drew her gun and planned to use Golden Hour to freeze time just before they landed to ensure she got the perfect shot. But as they were about to touch down, Yuki summoned all his strength to his legs, and with lightning speed, slammed into Yaki. Just before hitting the ground, Yaki activated Golden Hour, rewinding time to the crucial moment. This time, prepared for Yuki's kick, she triggered the Golden Hour early to freeze time. However, she was shocked to find that Yuki and Himeri had switched positions and were now completely out of her range. Himeri and Yuki kept dodging Yaki's Golden Hour traps, making her increasingly frustrated. Seeing Yuki's determination to win, Himeri felt both impressed and regretful for having treated him worse than trash. But Yaki, now exasperated by their evasions, played her trump card and activated prime time, a move that froze time for 10 seconds. This allowed her to land a direct hit on Yuki, sending them both crashing to the ground and injured. Just when Yaki believed victory was hers, Yuki struggled back to his feet, wounded but urging Himeri not to give up. He told her that Yaki was now weakened from using her final trump card and they were on the brink of winning. Inspired, Himeri leaped onto Yuki's back and they charged at Yaki, emitting a dazzling light that left her disoriented. Yaki tried to use Golden Hour to freeze time, but the bright light blinded her, and she accidentally fired at Yuki, leaving herself open for Himeri's counterattack. With Himeri still standing, the duel was over, and she was declared the winner. After the battle, Jinna healed Yuki's wounds, but he felt parched from all the running. Himeri and Yuki then headed home to get some water, only to be stopped by Yaki, who acknowledged Himeri's strength and asked her to return to the family. Himari, however, firmly told Yaki that she belonged to the Seventh Squadron and was never coming back, leaving Yaki stunned. Finally, as they arrived home, instead of drinking water from the plastic, 
Himeri lip-clapped our boy as his reward, giving him all the water to last him a lifetime. As this was ongoing, Saruga spied on them intently, determined to have a taste of the enjoyment. Soon, it was time for a duel between Saruga and Wakasa, a girl from the Tenka squad. Turning to Yuki, Saruga confidently told him to watch as she dominated the fight. Just then, Jin initiated the duel, and immediately, the two girls clashed, with Wakasa delivering an impressive Brock Lesnar suplex to Saruga. Furious and growing in size, Saruga prepared to counter. Sensing the change, Wakasa activated her special ability, Mad Sheep, which granted her the strength of a thousand warriors. The duel became wild as both fighters unleashed their full power. But Wakasa's strength proved overwhelming, and she brought Saruga down with a thunderous crash. Lying on the ground, Saruga glanced at Yuki and had a flashback of when she talked with her friends back in the world about how amazing having a boyfriend was. Motivated more than ever to prove her strength and win his heart, she stood up for another round. Charging at Wakasa, Saruga, now towering in size, overpowered her opponent, seizing her and slamming her to the ground. Just when she thought victory was hers, Wakasa revealed her secret move, sleeping mode, and decisively defeated Saruga, winning the duel. Later that day, Saruga felt heartbroken and humiliated for losing the duel in front of Yuki. However, Yuki visited her room, assuring her that she had done an incredible job. His words made her smile, and she rewarded him with a breathtaking kiss. Yuki wondered why she would do that, and she explained that she wanted to follow the shock of losing with an even bigger shock. Meanwhile, back at the battleground, Nei, scanning for any sign of the Shuki, spotted two humanoid figures that left her stunned. Suddenly, numerous Shuki burst from the ground, led by a giant humanoid named Raren. With one powerful punch, Raren shattered the barrier Jinnah had set up, prompting the monsters to charge at the team. At that moment, Yuki and Saruga joined the fight, and with the support of the Sixth Squadron, they battled the incoming monsters. Yakai engaged the giant Raren while Himeri approached Uzen, requesting to ride Yuki. Uzen agreed, and while he was still in his beast form, Yuki kissed Himeri's hand. As he did so, his beast form split and merged into one, transforming into an eternal beast warlord. With both Himeri and Suruga riding him, Yuki unleashed a powerful energy blast from his mouth, obliterating swarms of monsters. On the other side of the battlefield, Raren summoned lightning from the sky, striking Yaki and leaving her severely wounded. Just as Raren prepared to unleash a final devastating blast, Tenka intervened, instructing Yaki to rest and lead the giant to her. Raren taunted Tenka, reminding her of his army, but she calmly informed him that her mystic fire had already neutralized his weak-ass army. Now it was his turn to visit the afterlife. Meanwhile, Uzen sliced a giant monster clean in half, while Wakasa delivered a supercharged kick to another Shucky. At that moment, Raren summoned a powerful surge of electricity and launched it at Tenka. Just when he thought the attack had fried her, Tenka reappeared out of nowhere and aimed a kick at him, which he narrowly dodged. Raren continued to strike Tenka, but she evaded each attack by teleporting through portals she created. Frustrated, Raren unleashed a fiery blue aura and blasted her with massive lightning. But just when he thought it was over, Tenka teleported in front of him and landed a powerful punch to his face. This was the opportunity she had been waiting for. She clapped her hands, tearing apart the fabric of space, and a strong whirlwind swept Raren away, vanquishing him. With the Shuki defeated, Tenka praised Yuki for his courage on the battlefield, but he tried to downplay his efforts, saying she was far more impressive. Just then, Jenna rushed over, asking for his autograph. Meanwhile, Himeri thanked Yaki for saving her life, but Yaki explained that she only helped to prevent her from bringing shame to the family. She then urged Himeri to return home so she could train her properly. But Himeri refused, stating that the Seventh Squadron was her true home. Meanwhile, Uzen and Tenka decided to call the duel a draw, and with that, Tenka and her team teleported back to their base. Yuki, exhausted, muttered that all he wanted was a refreshing bath. However, Uzen and Himeri appeared in the bathroom, hinting at a harem plot as his reward. The next day, the team drove to the 6th Division dorm for a visit, and were greeted by Tikan, who gave them a tour of the facility. Yuki offered to help clean their dorm, which Tikan hesitantly agreed to, only for him to find out that the place was already spotless. Soon after, Yuki picked up some washed clothes to deliver to Yaki's room. He knocked on the door, but when there was no response, he foolishly barged in like an idiot and discovered the room filled with photos of Himeri, revealing Yaki's obsession with her younger sister. 
Embarrassed, he quickly shut the door and ran off as if he hadn't seen anything. Shortly afterwards, Uzen and Tenko were having tea and biscuits as they discussed their next move. Uzen suggested they should track down the humanoids and strike first. Tenka, however, expressed curiosity about how many humanoids there truly were, noting that the investigation had confirmed four. Uzen pointed out that one of the four had already been defeated, but Tenka voiced her doubt that Raren was truly dead, as she didn't sense his demise. Elsewhere at the monster's lair, Raren, who had narrowly avoided being sucked into Tenka's space rift, returned and met with two sinister humanoids. A white-haired girl named Juryu and a dark-haired one named Shikoku. Shikoku informed them that although they had been defeated by the demon defense squad, they would strike again once they had gathered all eight individuals. Meanwhile, back at the defense residence, after concluding their meeting, Tenka gave Guzin the shock of her life by asking if she could have Yuki as her slave. Tekna mentioned that all she wanted was a pet boy to help her unwind after long days and add excitement to her dull life. Sensing Uzin's hesitation, she then offered Uzin a tempting deal. She would support her candidacy in the upcoming Supreme Commander election. Uzin pondered the enticing offer but ultimately refused, stating she would become the Supreme Commander on her own terms. Shortly after, they headed home, and Uzin informed Yuki that Tenka wanted him as her slave, leaving him stunned. She assured him, however, that she had no say in his personal choices and that he was free to decide what he wanted. That night, as Yukai lay in bed, he thought about the situation with Tenka and wondered why such a hot baddie would be interested in someone like him. Suddenly, Tenka teleported into his room and began doing all sorts of nasty things to the Wabi Clapper, saying she didn't want him as a pet but as her boyfriend. She teleported his shirt away and was about to initiate an intense workout session when Suruga burst into the room. After this, Uzen scolded Tekna for being so thirsty and ordered her to leave. Tekna got up, telling Yuki that she wasn't finished exploring his manly features and promised they would continue another time. Later that day, the girls tested their unique abilities on Yuki to see which ones would be most effective in combat against the Shucky. When Nae mounted him, Yuki transformed into a giant Power Ranger with X-ray vision that could see through the girl's melon covers. Suruga insisted on trying next, but when she did, Yuki was bound in chains and turned into a monstrous troll which proved useless. Uzen then declared that Suruga would never be allowed to mount Yuki again. Suddenly, an alarm sounded, signaling that Nai was late for school. She hurried inside to get ready, surprising Yuki, who had no idea she balanced school with working for the defense squad. He then decided to accompany her to school to learn more about her. They passed through a corridor that teleported them to Japan. As they walked to school, Yuki asked Nai why she had joined the Demon Defense Squad despite being so young and still in school. Nai explained that her parents had disappeared in a Mado incident, so she joined in hopes of finding them and because serving in the Defense Squad was an honorable mission. Hearing this, Yuki reassured her that her parents were alive and that she would see them again one day. In the meantime, back at the dorm, Uzen and Tenka shared lunch, and Tenka informed Uzen that the Supreme Commander had ordered them not to engage the humanoids until they had enough information. Shortly afterwards, Yuki and Nei returned to join Tekna and Uzen. While they talked, an alarm blared, signaling multiple portals opening and Shukis emerging. The team immediately drove to the location, with Tenka teleporting in to offer her help. Uzen, however, declined, reminding Tenka that this was outside her jurisdiction. Tenka then turned her attention to Yuki, playfully harassing him, which triggered Uzen's jealousy. Uzen instantly ordered Yuki to hurry, and as he kissed her hand and transformed, she declared that she was retracting her earlier promise of not interfering in his life. From that moment on, she told him he was not to admire another squad commander because he was her slave and hers alone. With that, they charged at the Shukkis and effortlessly defeated them. A multi-headed monster emerged, but Uzen and Yuki cut it down without breaking the sweat. However, from a distance, Joryu and Shikoku watched, with Shikoku telling Joryu that the monsters the squad had defeated were mere child's play, meant only to test their capabilities. Meanwhile, Technet teleported back to her base, declaring that her life would never be boring again now that Yuki was part of it. After completely obliterating the Shukkis, Yuki earned the reward of carrying Uzen like a prince, which culminated in them sharing a nice kiss. Later, as the team gathered for lunch, Yuki received praise for his exceptional cooking skills. He then mentioned that he had learned a lot from his older sister, Aoba, when he was younger. In a flashback, Yuki recalled how Aoba would always protect him from bullies. Shortly afterwards, Nei began to glow, alerting the team that she sensed someone in danger. 
Emery and Saruga quickly took a vehicle to rescue the person. They arrived just in time to see a hooded child being chased by Shuckus. Himari unleashed a hail of bullets to fend off the monsters and then approached the child to check if she was alright. However, the child punched Himari in the stomach, revealing herself as Coco, a humanoid who declared her intent to make them suffer. Coco summoned more Shuckus. Himari, shocked, called out to Coco, trying to reason with her by mentioning that the commander was open to negotiations, but Coco merely laughed and dismissed the idea. Meanwhile, back at the house, Yuki noticed that his body was covered in cuts and bruises from the battle with the Shuckus. Just then, Uzen and Nae burst into the bathroom, seeing him in full Adam mode, and then inform him they were under attack. On the battlefield, Himera continued firing at a monster but found her bullets ineffective. Koka mocked her, explaining that the creature had impenetrable armor. Yake arrived in time to release a massive energy blast at the monster, but it dodged and Koko attacked Yaki midair. Simultaneously, Shiruga squashed a bug with her palm, only to realize it was no ordinary bug. The bug with the strength of Superman, revealing Yuno, another humanoid riding it, who then pierced Suruga's face with a spear. At the same time, Uzen and Yuki are on their way to assist the girls, but they are ambushed by Yuki's sister, Oba. Using her long hair, she restrained Yuki and created a diversion with a monster, which Uzen swiftly cut down but realized Oba had disappeared with her slave. Shortly after, the girls regrouped, thought deeply, and finally realized that the monsters they fought were just a diversion. Yuki was the true target. Hours later, Yuki woke up to find Koko smearing her tongue over his body, claiming her medicinal saliva was healing his injuries. Although Yuki tried to resist, she pinned him down using her cakes. Oba entered, and seeing the girl violating her brother, became furious. She stretched out Koko like a bedsheet. But Yuno intervened, explained that Koko's actions were healing Yuki's wounds. Yuki immediately remembered Oba's playful side and instantly knew she was his sister. So Oba walked close and enveloped him in her embrace. Oba then showed Yuki around their hidden village, explaining that they were all once human but had changed in appearance due to an accident. She suggested that Yuki should stay with them, but he urged them to consider opening a dialogue with the Demon Defense Squad instead of hiding. The girls gave him a cold stare, making it clear that peace talks were not an option as the squad was their sworn enemy. Back at the defense squad's dorm, the girls were obviously worried about Yuki's absence, but knew Uzen was restricted by the Supreme Commander's order not to engage the humanoids yet. Shortly after, Uzen gathered the team, informing them that her body had detected Yuki's location and ordering them to prepare for action. Meanwhile, back in the cave, Yuki noticed Aoba eating a peach. She explained that few dared consume them and hinted that their alien transformation was a result of eating the peaches. At the same moment, Huzin and her squad readied themselves for battle. Tekna and her team also teleported to the base, prepared to join the fight. In the cave, Alba was about to explain how eating a peach had transformed her into an alien, but Yuno interrupted, insisting her own story was more detailed. Yuno shared that, in her world, she had once been a beautiful model until a mishap with the Mato occurred. While trapped inside the meadow, she was attacked by the Shuckies. Driven by her love for beauty, she thought eating a peach might give her rejuvenating abilities. She ran to a peach tree, plucked one, and ate it. But its power went haywire, causing her to pass out. When she awoke, she found herself in a facility that studied Shuckies. She was used as a test subject, and her once beautiful body was no longer the same. She soon discovered she had gained the power to phase through objects and managed to escape. Oba then explained that a similar incident had happened to her after she had eaten a peach. Hearing this, Yuki suggested they expose what was happening inside the motto, but Oba quickly interjected, saying the bureau in charge of the motto would just shut them down, as its existence served the country's interests. With anger, Koko told Yuki they would dismantle the bureau and then summon her monster pet. Yuki tried to stop them, suggesting they speak with the Demon Defense Force, who might be unaware of the situation, but Alba pointed out that the Demon Defense Force knew everything that was going on. Coco added that the Demon Defense Force couldn't be trusted. At that moment, the girls of the Demon Defense Force teleported into the cave looking for Yuki, only to be immediately attacked by the Shuckies, now accompanied by Coco and her pet. Wakasa and Suruga decided to face off against Coco, while the rest of the team advanced deeper into the cave. Halfway inside, they were ambushed by Yuno's pet and other Shuckies. Himari and her older sister, Yaki, instructed Uzen and Tenka to go on ahead while they handled the fight in front of them. Tenka then created a portal and left with Uzen. 
They soon arrived where Aoba and Yuki were, and in the blink of an eye, teleported Yuki out of there faster than Eminem would drop a rap bar, shocking Oba, who hadn't known Tenka could teleport. After that, the girls decided to treat Yuki to the best manicure session ever, but Oba interrupted the licking spree and angrily charged at them for turning her brother into a human lollipop. Yuki stepped in, asking her to calm down and talk to his harem like a reasonable person. Oba smiled, unable to resist her beloved younger brother's request. Meanwhile, Wakasa and Suruga tried to talk sense into Koko, but the girl was more stubborn than a goat, so they decided they'd have to knock some sense into her. Above the scene, Joryu watched silently as the events unfolded. After explaining the issues with the peaches turning the girls into monsters and the Bureau's inhumane treatment, Yuki suggested Oba and her group stand down and leave justice to them. However, Oba refused, stating she couldn't trust Uzin and her squad, not after they had treated her brother as their slave. Yuki explained he had chosen to be a slave willingly to fulfill his dreams of becoming a hero, but Aoba ignored him, tying him up with her hair and summoning Unihorn. Uzen chose to fight the Unihorn in revenge, while Tenka faced off with Aoba, declaring herself as Yuki's girlfriend and therefore Aoba's sister-in-law. This infuriated Oba, who swore she'd take her down. At the same time, Yaki tried to shoot down Yuno's pet, but it created a shield, blocking her attacks. She then summoned her golden hour, freezing time, and blasted the beast, eliminating it instantly. This move gave Yuno the opportunity to strike at Himari. The scene shifted to a castle where Juri reported on the fight between Oba's team and the Demon Defense Force. Shikoku, upon hearing this, was pleased, saying it was the perfect moment for them to introduce themselves as gods. Back at the fight scene, Uzen sliced through the Unihorn's body like a fruit ninja master, while Tenka used her teleportation skills to dodge all of Oba's attacks. Despite Oba's incredible speed, Tenka had no trouble evading her since she could teleport 666 times in a row. Meanwhile, Suruga and Wakasa found it nearly impossible to defeat Koko and her insanely powerful pet. When Koko heard they were there to rescue Yuki, she teased them, saying Yuki was living his best life, enjoying intense plot development with them. These words enraged Suruga, and she told Okasa it was time to execute their planned formation. Shiruga immediately shrank herself to a size smaller than Tinkerbell, and Wakasa scooped her up in her hands as they fled. Seeing them retreat, Coco and her monster pet gave chase, but this was exactly what they wanted. Wakasa suddenly turned, launching a tiny Suruga at them, and the monster pet swallowed her whole. Inside its gut, Suruga activated her giant mode, tearing the creature apart from the inside while Wakasa used the distraction to launch an attack on Koko, injuring her severely. Meanwhile, Yaki, realizing her sister's life was hanging by a thread, activated Golden Hour, rewinding time by 10 minutes. Together, they figured out a way to pinpoint Yuno's exact location using Himari's newly unlocked ability, which involved turning her hair into guns. They used this skill to finally defeat Yuno and her pet. At the same time, Tenka and Uzen teamed up for the first time, managing to place Aoba in the perfect spot to trap her in a space rift. But just as Tenka was about to act, memories of Yuki and Aoba flooded her mind, causing her to hesitate. This gave Aoba the opening to blast Tenka with powerful mystic energy, sending her collapsing to the ground wounded and exhausted. Just then, Aoba's girls arrived, battered and bruised, followed by the Demon Defense Force members. Aoba then demanded that Uzen and her team surrender and return to their base, which they flatly refused. As they were about to start round two of the fight, a bright light appeared. From it emerged Joryu carrying Shikoku, making an unforgettable entrance. Shikoku announced that they were the eight thunder gods, leaders of the Shukis, and had no connection whatsoever to Aoba and her weak minions. She added that their mission was to eliminate all of humanity. That moment, Aoba attempted to attack but was countered by her own pet, Yunhorn, which Shikoku explained had been bitten by one of the snakes on her head. The monster went berserk turning on Alba with deadly intent. But just as it was about to land a final blow, Yuki, transformed into his beast form, intervened, and the two monstrous creatures charged at each other. However, that moment, Uzen had a brief flashback of how her village was destroyed with everyone massacred by Unihorn. Fueled by this memory, she charged at the Unihorn alongside Yuki. Meanwhile, Joryu left Shikoku behind, carrying an unconscious Koko and Yuno. Yuki soon began to overpower Unihorn, causing it to morph into an even deadlier form. The two beasts clashed in a fierce battle until Yuki sank his teeth into Unihorn's tail, shattering it. Uzen then finished the job, slicing the beast's entire body to pieces. 
With Unihorn annihilated, Shikoku immediately teleported out of the cave. Afterwards, Uzen told Oba there was no longer any need for them to fight, as she and her friends were also victims of the Mado incident. She vowed to do everything she could to help Oba rescue her friends. Later that night, the team returned to the dorm, where Yuki was handsomely rewarded by clapping the hell out of Uzen. The next day, they celebrated their safe return with a feast and a toast. That night, Yuki had a brief flashback of his sister in Uzen. Uzen had sworn to become Supreme Commander, reform the demon defense policies, eradicate all shuckas from the dimension, and find a cure for Aoba and her friends. This gave Aoba peace of mind, and she hugged Yuki, placed a stuffed toy in his hand, and left, promising to constantly watch over him. Back in the present, Yuki resolved to find a cure for his sister. Later that same night, a thirsty Tenka teleported into Yuki's room, ready to commence some clapping session, but Uzen interrupted them. As she left, Tenka promised to find a way to be alone with Yuki, even if it was the last thing she did. Days later, while they were training, Nei alerted the team to an open gateway where Shuckies were converging. The team rushed to the site, with Yuki transforming into his beast form and riding Uzen there at incredible speed. When they arrived, they unleashed chaos on the Shuckies, while Alba kept her promise of watching over Yuki closely. She vowed she would not rest until she found her missing friends. Will Yuki and the team manage to rescue the Koko and Yuno, and eventually bring an end to the Shuckies once and for all? Comment part 2 if you want the next part, and also, if you enjoyed this recap, smash the like button and watch a similar one over here.